Apollo 17, 1972, was the last time humanity visited the moon. Two years from now, we will be celebrating the 50th anniversary of that feat. In the time since, the space race shifted from purely governmental and military enterprise to becoming a major sector in the world economy and a major contributor to the pursuit of knowledge that is science. But we never did manage to keep up the whole visiting other worlds thing, at least not in person. Today, we might be on the verge of changing that, and for future astronauts to explore worlds, new and old alike, new technologies will be needed. Major players in space are calling for a permanent outpost on the moon, a lunar village, if you will, both as a research station and as a stepping stone for deep space missions. Navigation around the moon will be just as crucial for explorers out there as it is here on Earth, and the thought of a lunar positioning system, or LPS for short, is not far-fetched. A Walker-type constellation using 24 satellites and four planes with an inclination of 60 degrees will provide GPS-style navigation with full coverage on the surface, even at lunar poles. Such a constellation has an altitude of 2,262 kilometers, which allows for L1, L2 signals to be transmitted by a 10-watt antenna. These would reach the surface with a signal strength above the minus 160 decibels watt limit of commercial GPS receivers. But since we're going small, why not go all the way? With chip-scale atomic clocks, miniaturized ACDS, and microwave generators, and small, highly efficient solar cells, the LPS constellation could be realized using CubeSats. Indeed, the visionary lunar positioning system is made possible thanks to the advent of these nanosatellites, together with careful mission definition, trajectory optimization, and one more key ingredient, microelectric propulsion. In order to arrive at the moon, we are focusing on the latest addition to the electric propulsion family, the Electron Cyclotron Resonance Accelerator, aka ECRA. The ECRA uses a microwave generator to ionize and heat up a plasma partially contained by a magnetic field. A magnetic nozzle then accelerates the plasma in order to produce thrust. It boasts some big advantages, such as no moving parts, no need for a neutralizer, and very competitive foreseeable specifications for the low power spectrum. about 30 watt input power, 1 millinewton of thrust, and 1,000 seconds of ISP. These numbers mean you get a lot of mileage on very little fuel, just what we need for this mission. Current efficiency of the ECRA is about 17%, which may seem low, but it's already competitive with similar thrusters such as the BIT-1 from BUSIC or the P-4 RTF from Phase 4. The thruster efficiency is the result of three separate efficiencies, mass or ionization efficiency, divergence efficiency, and energy efficiency. We believe that we can act upon the mass efficiency for iodine propellant by optimizing the power to mass flow ratio in relation to the physical geometry of the thruster. Ideally, we can also obtain better energy efficiency by lowering energy losses to the thruster walls by adapting the thruster wall angle, exploiting magnetic shielding. We expect that the efficiency for an optimized thruster could be about 30%, which is truly great for this power range. Finally, we use concurrent design for the propulsion system and the trajectory optimization in order to open mission avenues that might not have been thought possible until now. We carried out a non-linear optimization of Earth-Moon trajectories for a 3U CubeSat using the dynamic frame of the planar by circular four-body problem. An impulsive maneuver of about 1.2 kilometers per second at geostationary orbit would inject the CubeSat into an initial transfer trajectory. From then on, it would rely only on its ECRA thruster to arrive at lunar orbit after 150 days, having consumed an amount of fuel of up to 15% of the CubeSat's initial mass. Of course, no good mission analysis would be finished without a cost estimate. However, since CubeSats represent a paradigm change in the way we access space today, it is still difficult to provide exact figures. Our estimates put a price tag of about $10 million on the constellation cost, and an additional $20 million for launches, if upcoming dedicated platforms are used. For comparison, the initially estimated cost of the Galileo navigation system was $3 billion. Thank you for listening to our initial take on this bold lunar positioning system. We truly believe that the combination of new electric propulsion platforms and careful mission planning and optimization will open the way for exciting opportunities in the future, of which we hope to be a part of. Hopefully, the moon won't have to miss humanity for much longer.